Good morning, guys, and welcome to day 41 of my trip through Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. I am currently at the Barsbeck Strands camping in uh, southern Sweden. And when I mean southern, I mean like all the way down in the south. Like you can actually see Denmark on the other side. I spent the night at this uh, cabin, at, the, at this camping, after uh, the cabin hosts actually reaching out asking uh, if I'm ever in the area and I need somewhere to stay, make sure I reach out and they'll hook me up with a place to sleep. And this camping actually have a pretty cool history. Uh, it's been a camping for over 90 years, 1930s. Yeah, pretty cool. And a couple of years ago, actually, I think it was last year's, I believe they said, the camping was about to be shut down by the city. Uh, so there were a few families here um, who used to be guests at the camping. They got together, made a plan, and now they are the ones running the camping. And uh, it's going really well so far. So that, that's so cool. Like if you really want something, um, there's always a way to, to make it work. The plan for today, I am continuing into Denmark. I'm curious to see what the Danish trans Trail is, more, is like. I've heard that it's mostly just tarmac um, in the countryside. But that's, uh, that can be very nice as well. But yeah, that's the plan for today. Uh, I'm going to pack up the bike and then we are on our way. today all right <laughs> I'm guessing we'll have to pay to pass into Denmark here to cross the bridge That was quick. Just tap your card to pay. It's a uh, 250 kroner, so about uh, 25 euros to pass here. Holy crap! See the line on the other side here. So many people. Are they going for? It's probably people coming from all over Europe to go into to Sweden. Oh, there you can see the entire bridge. Isn't that cool? Welcome to Denmark! I am officially on the Tet. Should be 278 kilometers to go on this route. So we'll see how far I get today. It is one o'clock now, so yeah. We'll see what happens. Danish Tet turned out to be a treat, taking you on a very relaxing ride through Denmark's countryside switching between low traffic tarmac roads and occasional shorter stretch of gravel. Surprisingly, despite Denmark having a larger population than Norway and being almost eight times smaller in size, I found it a lot less crowded than expected. It also struck me how very different the three Nordic countries I've traveled through are, each of them charming in their own way.
very rarely take off my buff because then like all kind of bugs and dust and everything are like underneath my chin and up into my helmet but uh, today we need all the ventilation we can have <sighs> Change of plans, guys. Um, I am taking another road. So freaking warm, and to navigate on the Trans Euro Trail, I'm using my phone, and I have it here on top of my tank bag, and it just gets too warm. It's overheating, and like it stops functioning whenever I stop and need to take a look at a route. It doesn't. Yeah, not so good. <sighs> I need some wind in my face right now. First thing, I'm gonna find ice cream, because that seems like the right priority. <laughs> mm. I can spot one parking spot with shadow here. Here we go. Huh. Why have one when you can have two? While having my ice cream and taking shelter from the pouring sun, a decision I had very mixed feelings about crept up on me more and more, eventually forming a plan. I set off again with a new burst of energy, past the location I had planned on camping that evening and found myself on the ferry crossing from Torsch to Sportsberg. The first ferry in many weeks. riding far longer into the evening than I normally do, heading straight into dark clouds and a waiting thunderstorm. This late night highway ride, accompanied by thunder and lightning, a breathtaking sunset and a whole lot of mixed feelings has etched itself into my memory. Late in the evening, drenched from the heavy rain, I eventually found myself in Middelfurt. Setting my camp this evening, I find myself a whole lot closer to Norway and home. Yeah, you. <laughs> Can't stay here. <laughs> Sorry, Mister, but you have to leave. Bye. All right, guys. I'm gonna try to do an update. <laughs> it is really noisy because of the rain and the lightning and thunder going on constantly outside. It's been going on for over, over an hour now, just constantly lightning and thunder and, and heavy heavy rain um, 
I kind of enjoy it. There's something about thunder and lightning that's just so like powerful. And as long as I can take shelter in a, a tent like this and stay dry, then I'm completely okay with that. Anyway, there was a change of plans midway through the day today. Probably about the time where I had my ice cream, I think. It comes to a point during a trip, at least for me, where it's just like you turn a switch over and it's just, all right, now I'm done. It's like, I'm trying to think about this and it's like, you know, when you're really, really hungry and you start eating, it feels so good and it tastes so good. And then all of a sudden you're just full. And that's been the same for me with this trip. It comes to a point where it's just, all right, I think I'm done now. I want to go home. <laughs> and yeah, I, I don't want to say unfortunately it happened now. I mean, I wish I had some more energy and motivation to keep exploring um, Denmark a little bit more and southern Sweden as well. There's a lot more to see, but I'm not in a rush. I can go back always and... and uh, and check it out later but for now i uh, i'm ready to go home so i'm right now uh, close to odense in denmark and i booked a ferry ticket at 12 o'clock tomorrow morning uh, back to norway but yeah that's uh, that's the new plan for now it's right now about 11 o'clock in the evening i arrived at the camping pretty late like once i decided like okay screw it i want to go home i just get some new energy I jumped on the bike I think about like over 500 kilometers today I'll get up at a decent time tomorrow and, and start heading further north and, and home again so uh, yeah I think you'll understand I, I'm pretty sure you guys understand if you've been on a longer trip then you know you know what it's like yeah. I'll see you again uh, tomorrow morning Sunday mornings on the road is usually pretty a uh, safe bet on little traffic it's always nice and what a morning compared to last evening holy crap now i have about 270 kilometers to hitchhikes so let's do that just a couple hours later i find myself at the port in hitchhikes waiting to enter the boat to Norway together with a whole lot of other a bit wet but also happy bikers. After securing the bikes, a three-hour boat ride awaits before we arrive in one of Norway's most southern cities, Kristiansand. From here, there's another three-hour riding to do before arriving in Olgor, the place that I call home. After 42 days and 8,200 kilometers, my bike was parked and my trip around Scandinavia had eventually come to an end. And what an incredible journey it has been. From the very start, I found myself graced with exceptional weather that seemed to stretch endlessly, unveiling breathtaking views along the coastal roads of Norway, all the way from south to north. Nights were spent at many memorable camp spots. And lunch were enjoyed amidst views so captivating that tearing myself away to keep riding was a challenge. Ferry rides across the Norwegian fjords became a regular occurrence. Very regular, in fact. I spent evening after evening enjoying the most perfect sunsets. And encountered both winter fields in the mountains 
and true summer moments by the fjords and lakes. Across the polar circle going north in Norway, and again going south in Sweden. A few challenges arose on the way, that luckily all were fixed pretty swiftly. I shared with you all of the good times. But also decided to share the few not so great moments. Sweeping through Sweden, I discovered a nation abundant in vast forests, yet equally abundant in beauty. I befriended some animals along the way, and others not so much. More than that, I crossed paths with so many fantastic, generous individuals, sharing moments that have become cherished memories. During this journey, I have also learned a lot more about myself as a motorcyclist, traveler and content creator. These are all lessons and experiences I take with me as I am planning my next trip because the end of one adventure marks the beginning of the next. In just a few short months, I am embarking on one of my most significant journeys yet, bidding farewell to the Norwegian winter and embracing the warmth of summer in a destination that even Norway struggles to rival. I hope you want to stick around and join me as I travel to the other side of the world for a one month adventure in New Zealand. Thank you so much for following along on this journey. I hope to see you back soon and until then, bye!